You wanted to address the corruption trial of Mark Chivarella. Yes, I did. Um, if you go to my website, and uh, it's uh, www.theluzernecountyrailroad.com, all one word, and click on the blog section, you'll see that I wrote prior to the trial, um, and it's all dated, It's it's been posted there since then, um, I predicted that the U.S. Attorney's Office would, in fact, do some sort of damage control during the trial of Chivarella. And what I mean by that is, um, very specifically, uh, I knew that once they opened the can of worms that tied in the payments to children being incarcerated and opened that can of worms that all hell was going to break loose and that the U.S. Attorney's Office would have to do something to try to minimize the damage because there would be so much collateral damage uh, because it, these were not two rogue judges operating in some little podunk town, coal cracking town. These people operated with the almost the full knowledge of the, ju- uh, the Judicial Conduct Board. They had over 40 complaints filed against them, and one specifically that, that probably outlined everything except the cash payments, uh, and they did nothing about it. They knew, the JCB knew what was going on here, um, and it, for, for the U.S. attorney to, to touch on that subject and open up that can of worms, I think would have started, and I predicted it would have started, a, um, an avalanche of uh, additional investigations that would have just spiraled out, totally out of control from this area. So what the U.S. attorney's office did to my t- everyone's total surprise, was they did not put a single, not one sentence, not one witness, not one exhibit, nothing to substantiate the, the, the balance or the bulk of the 27 charges that he was found not guilty on. They didn't put any of it. They, at the last minute, I mean, here, here was Sandra Br- Brulo in the next room waiting to go on the stand to start that segment of testimony to, to address those issues. They had addressed the tax evasion. They had addressed the, the bribes from Miracle and from Powell. They had addressed all of it. Now they were going to open up that can of worms. And it, it was either, either U.S. Attorney Peter Smith made the decision or a superior to him made him make the decision. But there was a decision made. And they rested their case at that point, and everybody gasped. And the jury did what the jury was required to do. They could not substantiate those charges. There was no evidence presented. So when they came out of the courthouse and uh, Mark Chivarella and his attorney asserted that this was not a cash-for-kids case, were they correct? (sighs) Well, we all know what it was, and we all know that it was a kids for cash, cash for kids. Um, And we all know that he was found not guilty of those charges by a a jury. And um, the the big question is, why in the heck did that happen? Because we all know what it was. Uh, You want me to say it? (laughs) They kept the can closed. That's exactly what they did. They kept the can closed. Now, whether it was, I, I researched Mr. Smith's background, and he has an impeccable background. I, it, of anybody I would want on my side, this is the guy. The, the guy's incredible. But I think if everybody looks at what's been happening since he, I criticized him from, from day one, I said in my blog that a person from Luzerne County should not be the person investigating corruption in Luzerne County. He is from Luzerne County. He was born and raised here. He went to a local college here. Um, and he went off and did wonderful things. And he has an, a, a fantastic record. But I, if I were an FBI agent, I almost did go into the FBI when I, I went through the State Police Academy for municipal officers. Uh, I was recruited. Um, but if I were an FBI agent in Scranton right now, I would be very upset with what happened at the Chivarella trial. There have to be some very disgruntled uh, agents up there that, because they did a heck of a job. They really did. And I really wish uh, a few of them would reach out to me and talk to me. 
It's 11.50 at WILK. We have the break for the Bloomberg Market Minute, so uh, stick around for the ending of the show. You're listening on 910 in Scranton, 980 Wilkes-Barre, 1300 Hazleton, and 103.1 FM. Uh, as for the tying up of the loose ends, what would you like to leave us with today? Well, it, it basically is, you know, I don't, I no longer have a dog in this fight, okay? I don't live here anymore. Um, I've talked one of my children into leaving the area. I'm working on the, on the other, my other daughter to get the heck out of here. Uh, I have family here. My roots are here. I have very mixed emotions. Um, I mean, I, I could very well just, uh, I live 20 minutes from the beach right now, and I really don't need any of this. Uh, but I, I have an obligation, I feel, uh, to, the, to the, other, the, the next generation to leave things better than the way it was when I was here. And, and we all have that obligation. It, it, is, it is on our shoulders. It, 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 it's not somebody else's responsibility. It's not, there's nothing we can do about it. It's not any of that. Uh, we, we really have to uh, demand it. And we have to demand it of our legislator. Anybody that has any, any pull with, with uh, Senator Lisa Baker, I've sent her my book. I've sent her emails. I have criticized her. I have coddled her. I have tried to prompt her in many, many ways. I've called her office, and I can't get a response out of this woman. And I, and I think that, I mean, she's, she's been wanting to take the lead on this, and, and, and I've, I've turned into someone very critical of, of what she's doing now. In one realm she did, but you're saying that some of the things that she proposed were, were somewhat uh, Demanding uh, attorneys be present, yeah, yeah. Of demanding attorneys be present at every, every hearing. Is fine, except that uh, the ones that were present at the Chivarella hearings weren't allowed to speak. Okay, so that's that's great. That doesn't really do a lot. Uh, that you know, it's it's maybe well intended, but there's there's so much more. I mean, why isn't she insisting on an investigation of the Judicial Conduct Board? Absolutely insisting on it. I I believe that she has been some somewhat critical of them, but again, I don't. Let me repeat this. I don't think it should be at the behest of, of private citizens to take up a petition drive to get things done in Harrisburg when we're paying lawmakers to do it. I, uh, I admire people that do things like that, but where are our lawmakers and what would make them move on something? Now, we know they have to work. They have to row together because that's the way they work. But this Judicial Conduct Board, um, time and time again, has been called out. And sometimes they've, they've tried to hide behind their attorneys. They did not want to testify at the that inner branch commission on juvenile justice they fought tooth and nail not to be there right so what kind of body is this is it a rogue body is it a body that uh, is just too, too congenial with the people it's investigating I think that the two of us can concur that it absolutely is and somebody needs to put a stop to it yeah absolutely there's no doubt there is no doubt whatsoever and what we're what we're attempting to do maybe this idea of the petition mm -hmm. I, I agree with you i don't really sign a lot of petitions in my life i'm, I'm very select um but with this we're going to go and, and embarrass a lot of legislators because we're going to make sure that they go on record one way or the other either supporting this or not supporting it so you okay, know, we're well, going to make our legislators or your legislators do their job, what they, what they should have done before we private citizens had to do something like this. You're still looking for the the information to take, though. So you're you're suggesting people email you at jcbcomplaints at live dot com. That's so correct. So you're still. Do you talk to Gene Stilp at all? Uh, I have not. You he, he is in my book. You should have absolutely I, I, speak I, with I him. I really, uh, you know, he, he, he shows, he exhibits the bizarre by doing bizarre things like the pink pig yeah. uh, at the courthouse and things like that. But, but uh, man, you want to talk about somebody that's out there sl actually slaying the windmills. Yeah, he is. He's, yeah. A, he's a windmill killer. <laughs> Larry Hohal, thanks for joining us. It was a Thank pleasure to have you me. in the studio today. You'll be at the Barnes & Noble, as we've told the people, on Sunday at 2 in the Arena Hub Plaza. So uh, I hope a lot of people do come out and talk to you. Those of you who have... Uh, tried with the JCB, JCB complaints at live.com if you want to send the complaints so that you have a body of evidence when you bring the petition forward and you can say, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Yes. And the two sentence reply of pretty much go pound sand, pal. You know, yeah. you got to finish up with that. We are finished for the day. I'd like to thank Larry for being here because uh, I didn't tell the audience, but I got home at quarter of two last night and really am beat. 
Uh, so it's great to have a co-host on the show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You are listening uh, to WILK. Bud has the news. Then it is the Rush Limbaugh show. Corbett in this afternoon to talk more about uh, another corruption trial in Lackawanna County. So stay tuned. You're listening on 910 in Scranton, 980 Wilkes-Barre, 1300 Hazleton, and 103.1 FM.